if we can actually make a change, whether it any, be any business ask, whereby a business ask had an idea, an insight, where let's say they want to be able to take and take a look at from a productivity standpoint of all of Jira tickets, all of our, uh, not Jira tickets, but our Zendesk tickets that are coming in regarding our cases that our customers have submitted, and to be able to identify where the operations team is efficient or inefficient. That insight, that idea, if we would explain that if we do it at Airflow, it probably would take us maybe two, three months to even get the data in place where we can actually start, begin to figure out a sort of insight to build a visualization, to build a dashboard. And, I, and the way I would sell it is instead of two, three months, what about three days? That's the difference that it would take to move over to Daxter. It's just instead of three months, we can do it in three days, just simply the accelerated uh, development, development cycle from that perspective, ease of development, ease of troubleshooting and monitoring, and the, and the fact that we can actually reliably make changes without breaking any of our existing processes. And that's the way I would sell it to the, that's the way I've been selling to the business, just really, how do you, what if I could take your idea from three months request down to three days? Then the, the, there's, there's no question asked, let's do it. Because then we can deliver more insight, we can deliver faster value, because speed is actually what we care about. Uh, the speed is really where we can actually drive our competitive advantage within our company. Our entire architecture really centered around Airflow uh, with, uh, with our own Python processes that were running the uh, Kubernetes pod operator. We ran into a load of different issues. The biggest pain point uh, I've generally seen in, in terms is really number one and from a stability, stability standpoint. We've had numerous outages whereby Airflow just simply wouldn't run our jobs, would refuse to run our jobs, or sometimes uh, the Kubernetes pod operators just fail to even uh, start or just fail midway during the processes. Uh, and these tend to happen maybe once a month, but once a month is just far too many for, for, our, for my perspective, especially since it's just Kubernetes that is just, that wasn't able to trace it from that perspective. So from a stability standpoint, was a big issue, and some a lot of times our instances would just completely be unresponsive, uh, which forces us to go in and restart all of the uh, the Kubernetes clusters as well as the entire Airflow Composer cluster. So stability was a very very big pain point for us at Airflow. Uh, the second bit of the biggest problem from uh, that I've seen number two was really regarding our end to end cycle time. Uh, so from a development experience perspective. Uh, running any sort of changes to our DAGs and Airflow. Uh, just due to the complexity with using the Airflow version one, uh, we actually, we never actually did our changes locally. We would just make a code change. We didn't really test it locally. We just figured it, we, we would hope that it worked, send it through the CI CD pipeline, commit the code, push the feature branch in, have it deploy into our dev environment uh, that's on Airflow Compose, uh, Cloud Composer and then we would be able to start the job and run it to be able to test change. From a code, com from a code change to a code commit to a CI CD process to actually starting the job, that is already eight minutes to get it from the, the to code change to deploy and have it, because even when you deploy to Airflow, even though it, it's done deploying, Airflow, because of the slowness of the scheduler to refresh the DAG metadata, it takes about a good two minutes to refresh and even when you start the job, it takes about two minutes to have the pod actually start up and run the job. So we're talking about an end-to-end -end cycle time of to even do one iteration of our, of our change, not even an end-to-end -end cycle time, just even one iteration of a change, it's 10 minutes. It was when we actually spoke with the Daxter team, they mentioned they had this airflow migration capability and it was phenomenal, actually. We were in, when we actually set it up and configured it, in working with uh, one of our engineers, with, with Joe, um, in about, what was it, four, I think four hours later, once we got it configured, we were able to run Airflow, Airflow 1.10.15 locally in a development sandbox on our Macs that we've never done before. Executing our Kubernetes pod operator DAG using a, the a Docker image that we had from, from our uh, Google Cloud repository that we pulled down locally, we're able to execute that Kubernetes pod operator locally in under four, after four hours of just testing it out. That was phenomenal. We've never seen a, a true local airflow execution of that before. But, in a few, but with Daxter, using the actual Daxter airflow migration, 
we're able to get that up and running. And then in three days later, we migrated all of our 73 different DAGs over to Dagster. And then in like two days later, we set up the GitLab CICD pipelines and now we're pu publishing our, our assets into Dagster Cloud and deploying it. So I think we really benefited from this uh, collaboration and speed that Dagster provided here while having significantly better development experience while at the same time running Airflow locally better than what we could run Airflow locally had we done it ourselves. What I definitely recommend from a best practice perspective is take a look at Daxer, take a look at its ability to run the Airflow migration and think of it as a way of a, of a, stopping, of a, of a stepping stone. It's a way to really be a stopgap. You can migrate, lift and shift all your existing DAGs onto the Daxer platform. You get to leverage Daxter's really well thought out end-to-end -end SDLC experience. So from a few, we're able to cover the migration standpoint, but you can actually use the platform to reinvent and redesign those pipelines in a new manner that will get you better better agility and better scale. Um, so that's the way I kind of frame it. And that's the, our actual plan and vision for using Daxter. We don't plan to keep our airflow DAGs for the long term, but nevertheless, in the short and mid, medium term, we're able to leverage Daxter to really get off of airflow first. And then we are able to rebuild these pipelines such that now we're going to have the agility and scale that we need going forward. And that's what I would think from a migration standpoint is how you can do, uh, you can, how you can ease it in because it de-risk it because you're just doing a lift and shift. There's very little risk from that guard. It makes it very easy to regression test and deploy. And at the same time, you're getting rid of old infrastructure. And at the same time, now you have a new development platform. And then from there, the rest is just, you know, delivery on the rest of the migration there. Mm -hmm.